The Kalos Indian tribe, how long has it been here? Who knows? For a while they said 5,000 years. Now the historians are saying it's probably closer to 15,000 years that they have been here. Uh, in the long ago time, they lived in this Kalos area, which is the largest land use area of all the Western Washington tribes. We did not have borders, boundaries. When you look at maps today that show this tribe here and that tribe there and their boundaries made, those were put there by the white man. We, can't, we cannot say, well, this was our boundary. We can speak of it as our land use area. The reason there's no boundaries for us is that we didn't own the land. We did not believe that we could own the Earth Mother. The Earth Mother owns us. She took care of us. She fed us. She gave us our life. And so there were no boundaries, uh, no set places. We didn't own it. Therefore, the, the area was our land use area that the white man drew boundaries and showed lines where we were. You might say it would begin at a starting point at about where Battleground is today, just outside of Vancouver. And then you could go down the Columbia River, past the mouth of the Cowlitz River at Kelso and Longview, and on down the Columbia another 15 to 20 miles. Then you'd take a right-hand turn up into the Willapa Hills, up, well, way up in the hills, but not over the hills, not down to the coast. We were not a coastal tribe. We were inland tribe, but uh, up into the Willapa Hills, and then take a right-hand turn there. Take on a line that would take you about right down the middle between the current cities of Chehalis and Centralia, up under the southern flank of Tacoma, Mount Rainier with the headwaters of the Kalos River and the Kalos Glacier to the Cascade Divide. Down the Cascade Divide, around Lawi Latla, Mount St. Helens, to the point of beginning at Battleground, and you've taken in the, what is today the major portion of southwestern Washington. You've taken in the parts of all or parts of what are now seven counties. That was Kalos land use area. And in this area, there were four bands of Kalas. There was the lower Kalas band from the mouth of the Kalas up to, oh, the area of the current city of Mossy Rock. And there were 29 villages in the lower Kalas. Then there was the upper Kalas from that area on up to uh, the area of current area of Randall Pack Packwood to the Cascade Divide. There were 14 Collins villages there. So on the Collins River, there were 43 villages where today there are nine towns. You start with Kelso and Longview, and then Castle Rock, and Toledo, and Mossy Rock, Morton, Randall, Packwood. You got nine towns, where at one time there were 43 towns, Collins villages. According to the Hudson Bay Company records, they claimed that at one point back uh, in the early 1800s that they estimated the population of the Kalas to be something in the neighborhood of 50,000 people. And then in the uh, early 1830s, the epidemics broke out. We began to, be, to fall to the white man's diseases, measles, smallpox, and other uh, diseases and problems. By the end of the 1830s, by 1839, the 50,000 are reduced to about 240 of us left alive. And the only few, few blood, full bloods that were still alive would have been those probably up in the upper Kalos that hadn't been any white man yet. Uh, but Probably the reason that I'm sitting here standing, uh, sitting here talking to you today is the fact that some of us got that French blood and the immunity 
to those white man's diseases were in that French blood. And so her whole entire villages died on the banks of the river because when they come down with the sickness and disease, the only thing we knew to do was go to the sweat lodge and then into the river to take a dip. And what happened? We'd come out on the banks of the river and died right on the banks of the river with pneumonia. Uh, it was, we were gone. But the first white men to come here, most of them, the majority of them, were French. And they would come as fur trappers for the trading posts and the fur companies. And they brought no women with them. And even the white, or the American and the English, when they came here, the men came, but they brought no women with them. So they married our Indian women. And that way we got, we were, a lot of us were breeds, half breeds and whatever. But we had that immunity and that's the reason there were a few of us left, left alive, I believe. Uh, but uh, we found that when there were only, uh, some villages completely gone and the white doctors, they burnt our long houses down because of our sickness and disease. The problem extended further in the uh, 1850s when Governor Isaac Stevens was appointed to be the first territorial governor of this new territory, Washington Territory. It had been Oregon Territory with Oregon and Washington all in it. And then we had been fighting, the people fought hard to get separation and have their own Washington Territory. Now, governor Stevens, when uh, he came in, he was a bad, bad, bad guy. He not only was doing a bad job in the treaty making, but then he started the war with the Indian people. And that Indian War, 1855, 56, it, uh, It caused a lot of, uh, of problems in that one of them was for the Cowlitz. They were put on a reservation at Fort Vancouver, a wartime reservation. And when, they re when the war was over and they returned to their homes, their cattle were gone, their horses were gone, their longhouses were burnt to the ground. There was nothing left. And we had to then begin competing with the white man. When the Homestead Act was passed, well, we were able to apply for a homestead along with the white settlers applying for a homestead. But we had a problem there too, because in the, our Indian world, a man could have as many wives as he could afford. So when he went to apply for a a homestead, they say, no, you cannot have a homestead if, if, unless you only have one wife. One of our college men, he had two wives. And he says, okay, I give up the old wife and keep the new young one. So he got his homestead. The way to do, he built two houses on the homestead, one end of it and one on the other. One for his young wife and the other for the old wife who no longer was his wife, but was his wife. <laughs> he, he just got around the whole thing. But uh, we entered into many problems with the new white government. We began to, in the early 1900s, to begin to pursue our land claim because they had taken every single acre of our land. They'd never bought it from us. They'd never say, well, how much uh, this white man, he wanted to build his cabin on a piece of the ground, or he got in the homestead, that took, gave it to him, but they never paid us for that land. They just took it from us.